Through his work with clients, Joe Calloway has studied patterns of organizational and individual success and failure. Today, Joe is nationally recognized as an expert on business trends and competitive factors. Sales and Marketing Management Magazine named Joe as one of the top business speakers in the country. Hundreds of companies depend on Joe for ideas on how to compete and win in today's changing marketplace. Joe believes in straight talk about what it takes to succeed in today's market. And his unique speaking style has been described as part Will Rogers, part Tom Peters, and part Robin Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Joe Calloway. How many of you would say, seriously, that you are a much tougher customer today than you were five years ago? Raise your hands. Look around the room. The world has changed. Tell me if you can relate to this. You tell me if, if this study on the new consumer has anything to do with your customers. Listen to this. Whether you sell $100 million planes or 79 cent pens, your buyers have changed enormously in the past few years. Does this sound familiar? Their demands are lengthening. Their patience is shrinking. Shifts in the economy have given them a sultan's power to command exactly what they want, the way they want it, and this one may be most important, when they want it, you'll either provide it or vaporize. Alex was just talking about the way that people buy and how that's changed. This morning earlier, Ken said that AT&T is now more interested than ever, not only in who you are, but in what you want. And the reason for that is, just like the reason that you're changing the way you do business, is because the basic rules of how we do business in this country, have well, it's around the world, as a matter of fact, have shifted 180 degrees. Now, here's what I mean. The rules used to be that the seller, the vendor, the manufacturer made up the rules. You can shift that around 180 degrees because now for the first time in the history of doing business, the buyer is making up the rules. The world has changed and changed significantly. What I wanna do this morning is help all of us get inside our customer's head because the key to this marketplace, gang, I'm telling you, is understanding what the customer's perception is of what's going on. Now let's talk about how, how those rules have shifted and how the customer has changed. First of all, I think a lot of it has to do with choices. Would you agree with me? Raise your hands if you agree with this. Today's customer, I don't care what they're buying, today's customer perceives more choices than they ever have before. Raise your hands if you agree with that statement. See, the idea is this. Whatever I'm buying from you, I know I can buy it somewhere else. I can buy it just as good quality-wise, probably, and I can probably find it for just as competitive a price. Let's take an example of a, a business, an industry, that used to be a classic customer for life business that is now incredibly competitive because the customer perceives, it's the customer's perception that has done more to open up this business than anything else. I want to talk about banking for a second because I do a lot of work with banking and there's a lot of bank customers here in the audience. How many of your parents, think about this for a second, how many of your parents did business pretty much their whole adult lives, and maybe still do, with one bank? When they said they were going to the bank, you didn't have to say which one, it was the bank. Raise your hands if your parents did business for this one, but look around the room. Far and away, most of the audience, 80%. All right, how many of you, I'm going to show you how the world has changed. How many of you do business with more than one bank? Raise your hands. Now watch this and listen. How many of you have ever fired a bank? Raise your hands. I said, listen, because I knew what you would do. Whenever I ask that question, <laughs> I'll say, how many of you have fired a bank? Not only do you raise your hands, you can't do it without kind of gloating about it a little bit. <laughs> how many of you do business with more than one bank? Yes, I do. How many of you have ever fired a bank? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I fired a bank. Sure, yeah. You know? Let me illustrate the way that particular relationship has changed. I'm a banker's kid, and, and I grew up around bankers. And as I mentioned, I do a lot of work with banks. Um, Adam, right? Sitting right here on the side row. Adam, just, I just want you to pretend like, so I can have somebody to play this off of, pretend like you're my banker 20 years ago. Okay, go back 20 years. I'm going to the bank to, let's make it simple. I want to get a car loan. 
Okay, you got the customer, you got the banker. I'm going in to get a car loan. In this situation, who makes up the rules, gang? The bank, and everybody knows it, including Adam and including me. So go out, I go into my friendly neighborhood bank, and hey, he is a friendly guy, and it's a friendly neighborhood bank, but still, it's the bank. 20 years ago, you know, I'm kind of intimidated but just by going to the bank. So I go in, and it looks like this. Hi, Adam, I wanted to uh, talk to you. Uh, can I sit? Should I? Oh, okay, thanks. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about getting a law um, My... Uh, Here's the deal, Adam. My car is, is an old, old car, and, and I've been, you know, seeing ads for all these, all these new cars, and I was thinking, well, well okay, maybe not a new car, but a, a better car. Uh, but, but even to get a better car, I would need from you, you know, money. The, I, I, I would need, I need a loan, Adam. I need a loan. And Adam, the friendly neighborhood banker, goes, well, we'll see. Fill out this three-page application form, turn it back in. I'll uh, run it past the Consumer Loan Committee. They're meeting in the morning, I think. <clears throat> Give you a call tomorrow. Hopefully we can uh, work something out for you. So now I'm sweating bullets, right? Filling out this three-page application form. I turn it in. I go to work. Next day I'm at work, Adam calls. He says, Joe, I've got some good news. Come on down to the bank. So I go to the bank and Adam says, Joe, <clears throat> I've got some good news for you. We have decided to give you this loan. However, let me see something. Now, you do have a 25% down payment or trade-in to put on this car, don't you? And I noticed, yeah, I noticed you wanted the loan for three years. <laughs> I don't think so. I think we'd feel better with a two-year term on this. And we're going to charge you, let's say, yeah, we're going to charge you a 31% interest. <laughs> and what was the customer's response to that? I got the loan. <laughs> oh, happy day. The bank has deigned to do business with me. And that was then. It was the seller in control. Not, I'm not picking on banking. I mean, that's the way it was with any business. That was then. And this is now. Adam, car loan, what you got? Talk to me. Because I've checked with a couple other banks, I've checked with the credit union, I know what the car company's got on financing, so what you got? And Adam, the friendly neighborhood banker, goes, whoa, whoa, we've got good loans, good loans. You, you don't have to go anywhere else to get a loan. Let me just fill out this, I'll tell you what, just sign this index card. Uh, <laughs> just sign it. Let me run it past my branch manager. He'll be back in just a few minutes, I know. I tell you what, why don't you go back to work, give me less than an hour. You give me an hour, I'll give you a call, we'll put you in a new car. You tell today's customer that, and what's their response going to be? An hour? <laughs> to do what? I mean, I'm on my lunch hour, man. I kind of wanted to get a new car and take it back to work, you know? What's this on your desk? Hello, excuse me, is this a computer? You, you call up my name, see my record. What are you guys going to do? Go out back and talk about it or something? I, I don't think so, Adam. I don't think so. What was that ad I heard this morning going to work? What was that ad I heard on the radio? The Acme Bank. Yeah, the Acme Bank, the 20-minute yes. What's that all about? Yeah, the Acme Bank. Excuse me, Acme Bank. 20 minute yes, what's that all about? And this guy says, 20 minute yes, you get in a new car, get a red one, get a fast one, have some fun, have some coffee, I'll go get the money. <laughs> so you're my new best friend and you're fired. You give today's customer what they want, the way they want it, when they want it. You provide that or as the consumer study said, you vaporize. Very interesting development the last just handful of years, two or three years. The, the uh, single industry or profession, or now I can say business, that I have seen the biggest increase in my business, being a consultant on customer service and that sort of thing, is healthcare. I've got hospitals, clinics, doctor's offices ringing our phone off the hook saying, we want to know about this concept, this uh, customer thing. And listen, it's a, it's a big shift. <laughs>
it's a big shift. I've got a lot of good clients that are hospitals that are moving from calling the patient just the patient to they're the patient and they're the customer. It is a whole new world. Well, let me, let me get, ask you this question. Look around the room at the answer to this one. You talk about a brave new world. How many people in this room, well, let's just do a year. How many people in this room in the last year have fired a doctor for having a bad attitude? Raise your hands. All the way to the back, raise your hands. Look around the room. Now, that's a sizable number of people. If I had asked that question 10 years ago, you think I would have had that many hands? No, because today's customers change. Think about it. I mean, people are behaving in, I work with the Medical Group Management Association a lot, the people that manage clinics, doctor's offices. The behavior of the customer, you've done this, I've done this. See if you can relate to this. I grew up in a little town outside Nashville, Tennessee called Springfield. If I was sick, my mother took me to Dr. Wilkerson's office on the courthouse square. Can you picture it? Have you been there? If you got to Dr. Wilkerson's office at 8 in the morning and you were still sitting there at 11 in the morning, what did you do? You sat there some more. Because again, we're back in the seller, customer, who makes up the rules. That was then, this is now. People are walking into the doctor's office and saying, hey, I've got an appointment at eight o'clock, it's uh, two minutes till, let's do something. And the person says, take a seat right over there and uh, we'll call you when the doctor's ready. When the doctor's ready. Uh-huh, mm-hmm, uh-huh, excuse me. I had an appointment at 8 o'clock. It is 5 after 8. Do you want me to explain to you why I made the appointment for 8 o'clock first thing in the morning? I've got a job to go to. I've got a life. You think you got the only doctor in town, lady? Let me tell you something. If this doctor's got all the money she needs, tell her to retire to Florida and play golf. Don't you mess with me. Get me in here telling me we're going to do something at 8 o'clock. Keep me waiting. And all the people in the doctor's offices are going, what the heck happened? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What happened was, it's almost like a wave at a football game. Customers, tick, 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 customers of everything, of every business, including you. I mean, I'm talking about you and me. We buy stuff just the way everybody else does. I don't know what it was. It was like this realization or something. Maybe it was one morning we all woke up and said, wait a minute, who makes up the rules? The people that sell the stuff make up the rules. Well, why should that make any sense? We've got the money. How come they're making up the rules? And so all of a sudden, it is in fact the customer in control. So the customer sees choices everywhere. Now there's a second incredibly important factor that has just taken place over the last few years. By few, I mean like five years. It has to do with quality. Well, let me ask you this. Would you say that the quality factor in, in buying and selling has changed significantly in the last five years? If you agree with that, raise your hand. The quality factor has changed. Here's what I mean by the change. Five, six, seven years ago, in most businesses, particularly the easiest to talk about is manufacturing because it's just so, so obvious there to talk about product quality. We'll talk about that in a second. But five or six years ago, quality was, in fact, the key competitive factor. If you had great product quality, and your product may be a service, fine, let's include that in product. If you had great quality and you had a competitive price, you won. It was a matter of counting your money because you won. It was the key competitive factor. Now quality has graduated. It is infinitely more important than it used to be and quality has now become an expected factor. Understand what I'm saying? Quality is no longer a competitive factor because it is more important. It's more important because who out there, generally speaking, in most businesses, who provides quality? Everybody. Everybody's got quality. Alex was talking about the, uh, the transformation of the way we use the automobile. Let me give you a very recent history on the automobile. I was working with, uh, with Buick. I do, do a lot of work with auto manufacturers. I, I was working with them a year ago, January, right before the Chicago Auto Show started. We were in the uh, lower level of McCormick Convention Center there in Chicago, and they were about to go up and work the auto show. I said, listen, gang, please understand the auto show today is a totally different deal than it was five years ago. Because in 1987, 88, 89, 90, 91, people would walk into an auto show with all the different kinds of cars. They would walk in and they would go through the cars like this. They'd go in and they'd go, whoa, what a piece of junk. Junk 
garbage, garbage, wouldn't have it. Oh, now there's a good car. That over there, that is a good car. Junk, 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 junk. There's a good car. That's a good one right there. Oh, this is junk. I wouldn't park that in my driveway. That's junk. Junk, junk, junk. Oh, there's a good car. That one's a good car. That was five years ago. Now people walk in the auto show, and what do they say? Whoa, good car. Good car. Ford, Chevy, Nissan, Cadillac, Honda. Good car, good car, good car, good car, good car. It has totally revolutionized that business because that playing field has, in fact, become somewhat level. Well, that brings us then to the third key factor, which is mostly what we're all talking about today, which is service. Now, here is, I find an interesting question, and I'll tell you why. Some of the questions that I ask, I can pretty well predict what the split's going to be in the audience or if it's going to be almost unanimous, whatever. This question, honestly, I have no idea. I may get a 10%, 90% split one way or the other, 50-50, I don't know. It, it's always interesting to me to see how audiences respond to this. Here's the question. Generally speaking, would you say that service is better than it has ever been or worse than it has ever been? Think about that for just a second. Is service today, generally speaking, across industry lines, better than it's ever been or worse than it's ever been? Let's start with better. How many of you would say that in your experience, service is better than it's ever been before? Raise your hands. Okay, look around the room. Now, let's see. It looks like maybe about 50%. Let's see what we'll get the other side. How many of you would say that service is worse than it's ever been? Raise your hands. Isn't that interesting? I mean, you've got people sitting side by side. They have the same experience out there in the world today. Let me tell you what I think is going on. I come down on the side that I think generally service tends to be, particularly service processes, tend to be better than they've ever been. And along with that, what has happened to service expectations? So see, it's a very relative thing. I think service is better than it's ever been. I travel all the time. And so I can look at, at lots of instances and examples in the travel industry. And let me tell you something, service is better. Than, do they, I, I use a lot of rental cars. Do they still have, do rental car companies still have counters in the airport? Do they still do that stuff? You remember where, where you used to go and stand in line for 40 minutes and then have to fill out a form for another 30 minutes? And then go, do they still do that? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know because I know I get off the plane, I go straight out the airport, I get onto a bus, I say, Callaway, Gold, Platinum, Diamond, Number One Club, whatever it is. <laughs> but you just join all of them, you just, you just set it up. And the person says, Sah Sahib, your car is waiting. <laughs> they take me to my car and you know how I know it's my car because why my name is in lights over the car <laughs> if it's winter the engine is on and the heater is on the trunk is open ready for my bags if it's summer the engine is on and the air conditioner is on I have gotten so spoiled that if I get off the bus and the trunk lid is not open I throw my bags down and say what the heck's going on around here <laughs> Okay, I guess I have to take the key out of the car, <laughs> open the trunk myself, I tell you. <laughs> All right, here's the 64 gazillion dollar question. I'm going to ask you a question about competition. The question is very simple. When I ask this question, just in your own mind, fill in the blank, okay? Who, particularly when it comes to service, okay? Who is your competition? Fill in the blank. Now, how many of you immediately thought of a company that does, I mean, this is the obvious natural answer. How many of you thought of a company that does what your company does? Yeah, our competition is, you know, if I'm Hertz, my competition is Apes. If, if I'm a computer company, my competition is another computer company. If I'm a computer company, my competition is another computer company. About three weeks ago, I was working with uh, my computer at home on a Saturday in some new software that I had gotten. And I got stuck, I got a disk error, and, and I couldn't figure it out. So I got out the manual for the 1-800 customer service number. Who is that computer software company's competition? Now follow the story with me. I call the 1-800 number and I get a recording that says, thank you for your call. Our customer service line is open from six to six, Monday through Friday. Who's their competition? I immediately thought, 
you know, that's interesting. There's an ad that I've seen lately for a car insurance company, and uh, gee, their customer service line is open 24 hours a day. I mean, if you have a car wreck at 10 o'clock on Saturday night and at 2 a.m. on Sunday, it's still kind of bothering you. Uh, you can call them up. You can call them up at 2 a.m. on Sunday and say, am I covered? What it is? What happened? What do I do? What do I do? And they will tell you that, yes, you're covered. Here's what you need to do. You know, the nearest claim to da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Who is that computer? Oh, by the way, I am not a customer. I don't happen to be a customer of this particular auto insurance company. I am not their customer. And yet, who was that computer software company's competition? A car insurance company that I don't even do business with. Have you seen this ad on TV lately? They've just started running it. I love this. I'm eating this up with a spoon. A Federal Express truck zooms up. A UPS truck zooms up. So I see somebody nodding their heads already. Listen, here's what the announcer says. Listen, the leading deliverers of on-time service are Federal Express and UPS. Look who's joining them. And another truck zooms up. Can anybody tell me what kind of truck it is? Somebody got it. It is a cable TV truck. The leading deliverers of on-time service are Federal Express and UPS. Look who's joining them. Cable TV. You get your installation on time or it's free. You get your service on time or it's free. What a concept. As a ca cable TV company, I've got to be as fast, as reliable, as guaranteed as UPS and Federal Express? Yes, because here's the thing we all bought into. I bought into it and it doesn't make any sense. I used to think, well, my customers only compare me to the people who do what I do. <laughs> Where did we come up with that? I'm going to call your 1-800 number at 11 a.m. On the way to work, I stop at the Texaco station and they treat me a particular way. And then I stop by the bank, and the bank treats me a particular way. And then I go by the dry cleaner. By the way, I love my dry cleaner. I walked in the other day, this was the last time I was in there, and I, I picked up my stuff and I was walking out the door, and the clerk says, Mr. Calloway, Mr. Calloway, I thought maybe I'd left something. I turned around and said, what, what's wrong? She said, you gotta do something for me today. I said, what? She said, have a great day. Okay. I mean, cool, right? Then I go to the office and I call your 1-800 number. Who's your competition? It's the Texaco station, it's the bank, and it's the dry cleaner that just said, you got to have a great day. There's a bank that I work with, a bank holding company out of Nashville, Tennessee, called First American Corporation. This is the copy of their, the cover, rather, of their latest annual report. Okay, can anybody read that? Yeah, can you? The background says the new customer reality. What they're doing on the cover of this report is they're talking about who their competition is. This is a bank. This is who they have decided they are up against in the marketplace. A package delivered overnight. 24 hour a day shopping. A 30 second wait at a fast food restaurant. Catalog shopping around the world. Here's my favorite. A gas pump that takes your card. It's expectations being driven by market forces outside the banking industry. It's the customer in control. And the general idea that I'm getting across is this, is that my competition is, fill in the blank, everybody. I've got to be as good as the best service provider out there. If I'm going to benchmark, I can't just benchmark the other business consultants that do what I do. I've got to benchmark Federal Express and UPS and Motorola and Whirlpool and all you guys. Because if my customers are dealing with you and you provide incredible levels of service and then they deal with me and I don't, they're going to say, Callaway, how come if they can do it, you can't do it? And so I've got to start looking at the market, not just as the banking market, the insurance market. No, that's how we look at it. Look at it from the way the customer looks at it. It's just business. So when we're talking about quality, meaning doing the job right on a consistent basis, Delivering value, adding value. Well, yeah, I was kind of hoping you'd give me that. Well, okay, what is the new competitive factor then? You tell me. Now, I've got a survey here, and this survey explains everything, but I'm not sure this survey is right. 
This survey is about why customers quit. I bet a lot of you in the audience have seen this survey. It's probably up on a lot of your bulletin boards. Department of Commerce, why customers quit. But rather than just read you these numbers, I want to find out from you why customers quit. We know that customers have choices. We know that quality is everywhere. So what's that new competitive factor? Everyone in the room, I want you to put yourself in, in the role of a customer. You used to do business. Now think of a real situation. You used to do business with this store, insurance company, restaurant, service station, whatever. You don't do business with them anymore. You fired them and you are not going back to them. No way, no how. I want you to think of a real situation. I want you to think of one where the mere thought of that company kind of makes you twitch like this. You're thinking to yourself, oh yeah, I've got one and I am not going back to those guys. You can bet on that. So just everybody help me out here. We need participation. I need you to think of one. Now I'm going to give you a survey, kind of a family feud deal. I'm going to give you three choices. Why did you fire them? What line in the sand did they cross that was so unforgivable? Was it a price issue? Was it a quality issue? Or was it the way somebody treated you? How many of you would say it was price? Raise your hands. Out of a couple of thousand people in the room, gang, I don't see maybe two, three. Okay, how many of you would say it was purely a quality issue? Raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe I'm missing a few. Let's say a hundred. How many of you would say, this is the real world talking? How many of you would say, the reason you quit and you're not going back is because of the way someone treated you? Raise your hands. How many of you have ever been a customer? You're dealing with a company, the company makes a mistake, and that's okay. You stayed their customer. The mistake wasn't the line in the sand. Sometimes mistakes will be made. Problems will come up. Well, what line did they cross in terms of the way somebody treated you? Survey says...